Today we're going to talk wiring, specifically uh, clean and neat wiring, but I'm also going to show you some tips for, uh, for soldering your connection, specifically on a, a really high-end board like the Crystal Focus version 6. A couple of tools you're going to need for today is a really good soldering iron or a soldering station. Uh, you don't want to use a soldering gun, you want to use something that is electrostatic safe or ESD so you don't get minor static discharges to your circuitry like a crystal focus board and you could damage it. So an ESD safe soldering iron like this one here in the base station. You're going to need a hot glue gun for one of the trips, tips that I'm going to show you later. Obviously some solder and these little gems called helping hands, little alligator clips. These are going to be invaluable. So let's get right to it. So maybe you got a situation like this. Um, this is one of my Ascend Savers that I'm upgrading to a Crystal Focus 6. It's also got the color extended there. Um, so probably more complex than what you're working on right now. I wouldn't I recommend this as a first saber, uh, do-it-yourself saber, just because having these two boards in here is pretty complex. <clears throat> having them mounted on the battery and then isolated with some electrical tape um, so that they stay in place. You can also zap strap your board to the, uh, the, the battery if you're doing that. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you some basic uh, tips with wiring. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail with the soldering, although we'll do some of that. Uh, but basically what I wanna do is show you, you know, I've got the saver body here. I've got the wires separated out, so I know these are all the wires, the six wires going to the LED. Um, I've twisted them together and I've got my switch wires. Um, and so those all go to you know this end of the saber. And so what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to cut these to length, solder them to their proper place on the board, and then run this in such a way that I'm able to get guide this into the saber without pinching things, crunching things, breaking wires off. Um, there's a couple things that I can show you that will help you do that. Okay, I've got my soldering iron warmed up. I've got my safety glasses on. I've got my helping hands here and uh, the tools laid out. Um, I'll show you a couple of things. Uh, first, what I'm going to show you is uh, with a saber like this, I, I like to use clips a lot in my designs. Um, you know, Molex KK connectors like this. Um, and then these are the ones I'll be actually attaching later for the speakers. Um, but with this type of design, there's just not a lot of room for clips and connectors. So I find that I'm going to have to attach all of these wires directly to the board. Um, so what I want to do, it's really important to, to cut your wires to length. And I'm going to say this a number of times. You're going to hear me say it over and over again and beat it to death. If you rush it, you wreck it. You need to take your time. You need to be patient with these things. Um, really high-end, nice saver, something you're going to be proud of. It's not something you just slap together in an afternoon. You're going to need to work at this. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting these wires. I've already cut these, these ones to the switch to length. Now I want to leave room so that when I pull the whole thing out, the... Uh, the battery clears the end of the saber here, so I can actually pull it out to service it should I need to. So I'm going to cut my switch wires first. And what I've done here is you may be able to see it. Um, the gray wires go to the auxiliary switch. The white wires go to the activation switch. It doesn't matter positive or negative. Well, what does matter is that um, both of these switches can have a common ground. So I've twisted a gray wire and a white wire together. And I'm going to attach that right there to my the ground for both switches. So rather than try to find one spot for each, I've twisted them together. I've tinned them so they're they're soldered together. They're nice and ready to go. Um, I've stripped this white wire, and as you can see, I've got between an eighth of an inch and a sixteenth of an inch of uh, of the wire insulation stripped off. This one I haven't. You're going to need to get some good wire strippers. I'll go over this in the tools section. And you want to learn how to strip the wire off and not tear things apart. I like to give it a, a nice clockwise twist so the wire braids and stays together. Then what I, I do is helping hands, probably do both of these at the same time. Helping hands, and I'm going to pre-tin these with my soldering. So I brush it off on my brass sponge or if you've got a wet sponge. I've got my solder iron tip, I've got my solder. I'm just going to touch a little bit to get the soldering iron ready to go. And then I just a little bit of solder on this. Here's a tip. You don't want to do this over your electronics because if solder sprays or drips onto any of these connections, you could be in a world of hurt and not even know it because the connections are so small. So I've got my wires cut to length for the switch. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these helping hands. Now because I know that they're to length, I can slide this in here just to give me some, some room to play. And I'm going to think, okay, what's the order I want to solder these in? I want to solder them so that I'm not getting in my own way. I want to start here and then work this way. So I'm just going to get my helping hands to grip these. These helping hands are incredibly, well, 
helpful. Now if I've got, if I've stripped off a lot and it's more than I need and I don't want to risk any short circuits, I may snip a little tiny bit off of there. So now I've just got, got it to fit perfectly. I want it to sit without me touching it. And now I'm just going to, again, touch the solder to the tip, place the tip where I want it, add a little bit of solder, make sure that I get a nice joint there. Yeah, it's a very nice shiny joint. If you get a joint that's not shiny, it could be because the wires were wiggling while the solder was cooling. It's called a cold joint. You don't want that. So that is a good joint, number one. So I'm going to do the rest of these like that and uh, show you what it looks like. Another thing I wanted to show you is, um, before I do this last wire here, is if you find that the, the body of what you're soldering is moving too much on you, um, you may not have expensive equipment, but this, this is just a basic um, clamp you can get at a Home Depot or whatever, and you can, you can clamp this very gently onto whatever it is you're working on. It doesn't have to be tight. And now that doesn't rock anymore. That's not very tight. It's not going to damage anything. So now I can get a nice... Well, I'm going to snip a little bit off of this again. Again, take your time. You rush it, you wreck it. And get that to line up with the connection point of what I want. Make sure there's no short circuits. I just used my soldering iron, so it's pretty primed and ready to go. Another really nice joint. Very happy with that. Take my helping hands out of the way. Remove my clamp got nice neat wires going to my switch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unbraid these and I'm going to uh, run them all to the proper places, snip them at the proper lengths and uh, finish soldering them up and then we'll continue. Okay I've run all my wires and uh, they're all cut to length and soldered on there um, and you've heard the adage measure twice, cut once, never been more true than when dealing with wires. Not only do you want to measure twice, you want to make sure you plan where the wire is going to run. So I, I cut these colored wires a little bit longer because they don't run straight like these do. They run here and then they go up and then around. Because I plan for what I'm about to show you next. When wires are soldered onto joints, where the solder is, um, that becomes a, a fragile joint. Wires are meant to bend. Well, they're not meant to bend where they're soldered. And if they bend back and forth, if they move a lot, they'll eventually weaken and break off. So you want to plan for this when you're building your saber so that that doesn't happen. There's a couple ways of going about this, and I'm going to show you one of them right now. And it's this. It's just a zap strap. And I showed you, you can get these at, at Home Depot or an electronics store. So you want them to go around your entire bundle of wires. Make sure you're not missing any. And actually, I'm going to go around this way because um, the head of these, when I'm finished, it actually it looks small, but it sticks out quite a bit. And uh, you don't want it to stick out and catch on anything. You want it to be nice and low profile. So I'm going to zap strap these wires right above there. And uh, try to get my hand out of the way. And I want to gently just tighten it up so that it makes all of these wires come into these different places on both boards into one little bundle. And then I'm going to snip that off so that it doesn't catch on anything. So now I've got a zap strap. Now you can put a second zap strap in here. Um, and that sometimes helps. And what I'm going to do is, when I'm ready to, to put these in, is I'm going to make an S-curve in this wire, like this. I don't know if you can see that. So that when the when the, this stuff goes inside the saber body, you can already see it's starting to compress. The point is the wires are compressing and going where I want them to go. Not sticking out into the board and going places I don't want them to go and breaking off and snapping off. They're, they're, they're folding how I want them to fold so that everything's going to slide together nice and when I want to, I can pull it all out again. So that's one little trick that you can uh, you can utilize when you're uh, planning and running the wiring on your saber. Even a saber like this has got a lot of wires. Um, I'm just going to set up to show you one more. Now, as you can see, I've soldered my my switch connector here. Now, the, the, or sorry, not the switch, the speaker. The speaker is going to be able to unplug on this saber. So I've got my speaker connector, and you notice that I've got it soldered sideways. I don't have the wire sticking straight out from the board like this for two reasons. Um, one is I don't need to use these pads right here. I've already got the power wire soldered from underneath. And second is I want to make this uh, saber really easy to get access to the SD card which goes underneath here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these wires so that they they go like that. Um, and this is the trick. Obviously number trick number one is, is routing the wires where you want them to go to give access to the 
parts that you want to give access to, but also how to keep those, because because the speakers come in, in and out on this Sabre, these will eventually move, move, and weaken and break off. Unless I do what I'm about to do now, take your hot glue gun, and I'm gonna need to clean off this tip a little bit. And I'm gonna put a dab, I'm gonna put two dabs of hot glue. Number one, right underneath here. Right there like that. And while it's still hot, very little of it, you don't wanna to use too much. I'm gonna just lay the wires across it. And I'm gonna hold it until, oh you can't see it there. I'm gonna hold it until it dries a little bit. And I'm gonna blow on it. And when that starts to dry, the next thing is, is I'm gonna turn them so that they're pointing the direction that I want. I guess it'll hold it right there, that's handy. And another little dab right on the top. So basically, I'm adhering these wires to the board, but I'm also adhering them to each other. And I, I, this is a bit of a trick, because you don't want to use too much glue and get a big gob of it. So you want to practice that on some other things before. And uh, just use a tiny little bit. And as it's drying, I'm pulling off these little strings, because they really drive me nuts. And when this dries, as it's drying right now, now you'll notice that the wires are gonna move, but the solder joints, well, they're not moving at all. They're staying exactly where they're supposed to. So that's gonna protect these speaker uh, connections from pulling off as the speaker's pulled in and out of the Sabre as the person who's using it wants to get access to the SD card. So those are a couple of tips that you can use um, when wiring your Sabre that's make sure it's gonna last a lot longer and work a lot better. Well, I hope that's been helpful for you when you're wiring your Sabre at home. A couple things to keep in mind is there are a lot of great resources available online. There's some other YouTube videos. I'm going to link to one in particular that goes into much more detail when it comes to precise soldering and best practices from a professional. You might have a French accent. You might recognize it. Um, also, there's other available resources in terms of wiring, rooting your wires, what type of wires to get, um, all those kinds of things that we didn't go into in this video but may get to further on as we go, um, adding further videos, more in-depth things. Um, we'll show you some new tricks and tips when it comes to assembling your high-end saber. So uh, again, thanks for watching.